Hey, what's up? I'm Andrew Bacon and welcome to part two of my dream miter saw station build. Today I'm going to focus on all the drawers, the assembly, the installation, and the drawer pulls. So check it out on today's episode of Field Treasure Designs. So I started out by ripping down some half inch plywood that I would use to build my small top drawers in the torsion box. Then I went to my new miter station and cut them down to size. This thing is already awesome. I can just set my materials right there and keep on cutting. Wow, what an improvement. So I've got the sides all cut out. Now I'm ready to assemble them. I decided to attach them with pocket hole screws. So let the pocket hole drilling fun begin. And no, I'm not doing dovetail joints. Sorry, just basic stuff here. After I finished the pocket holes, I grabbed a one quarter inch piece of plywood and ripped it down to make the bottoms. I'm simply going to tack them in the bottom since these drawers aren't going to hold anything very heavy. So then I took it over to my miter station and wow, look at that. It holds the long piece perfectly. Now I still had to flip it over because like I mentioned in my other video, having a track saw would have really been nice, but the rip cut doesn't extend that far. So you have to be creative on the miter saw by making one cut and then flipping it and doing the other cut. Quick note here, I am cutting the rectangle bottoms a little bit bigger than my planned frame size and I'll show you why here in just a minute. So then I went back to my workbench and I'm assembling the drawers. I grabbed my Craig pocket hole clamp to hold the piece together while I screwed it in with a pocket hole screw. Then I took it off and screwed in the other side. So then I just worked my way around and assembled all of the drawer frames. Half inch plywood can sometimes have gaps in that plywood and so some of them I had to rotate in order to find some meat to screw into. And it's always fun having my son there right beside me. Boom, done. Next, it's time to add the bottom. So I did some wood glue all the way around and spread it out. Then I grabbed my panel and just tacked it in with my nail gun. After I was done securing the bottom, I grabbed my router and this is where I'm trimming up that edge so it's nice and flush. I'm using a straight router bit with a ball bearing edge to guide it along that frame. This is so much easier than trying to match a precise measurement and risk being short. And all done, good to go. Now I've got a nice smooth flush bottom that's ready to become a drawer. Now comes the installation part. Now some people think this is very complicated, but it's actually not too bad. So I'm currently sizing it up and seeing exactly how high I want this drawer to be. So I'm grabbing some shims so that that drawer is just about in the middle of the opening in the torsion box. Now I'm making a mark so I know exactly where I want that drawer slide to go. And I grab my drill and I screw in the slide really carefully. Then I do the other side. This is a better view that you can see me screwing in the drawer slide as it sticks out just a little bit. Okay, so now I pull the drawer out and detach that insert that stays on the actual drawer itself. So I pull it out and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to match up that mark on the front that I had already screwed in and I'm gonna match it to the back so that that little insert is in the exact same spot all along the drawer. After I got one side done, I flipped it over and here you can get a little better idea of me lining it up so that that drawer slide is all along the middle of that drawer, keeping it in the middle of the torsion box so that that drawer can go in and out. After I did the middle screw, I checked my work and sure enough, I'm right in line. Now we're good to go. Here I reinsert the drawer and hope for the best. The moment of truth and we are good to go. Awesome. Next, I wanted to make some temporary handles so that I could access the drawers, which funny enough, ended up becoming my permanent handle design. So I grabbed some scraps and assembled them together. Here I'm using countersink holes because that point right there is going to go against the drawer face and the screws need to be flush. So then I grabbed some glue and some fasteners and I joined them together. Then I grabbed my sander and using 220 grit sandpaper made it nice and smooth. Obviously these are handles and you want them nice against your hands. After I got done making these handles, I thought, man, these are pretty cool. I'm gonna brand these. So that's what I did and boom, looks awesome. I think it was about this point in time where I started thinking about these being a permanent solution. 
Next, I decided to attach them to the drawers temporarily just so I could utilize them and make sure that this was a good fit. So as you can see here, I'm lining it up to the center of the board and then I've got two screws that are going to secure it from behind. I drilled countersink holes already so that that screw is flush. Then I grabbed a clamp just to hold it in place nice and tight while I screwed it in. And done, nice. Now to the other side. Yeah, these are sweet. And I'm so glad that I ended up doing my handles this way. After I finished the drawers and the handles for the top part, it was time to turn my attention to the base cabinet drawers. And these are gonna be bigger. So I'm ripping down some three quarter inch plywood that I had left over. And as a bonus, the miter station was a little support for the workpiece because it's the same height as my Polk workbench. So score on that. I had some longer boards I needed to rip down as well, so I grabbed the old Craig Rip Cut again to continue the ripping down process. Got a nice stack ready to go. I've already measured for the vertical length that I need for the different drawers, but here I'm making sure that my horizontal length is correct so that I have room for the drawer slides as well as the drawers themselves. Then I just cut them to length. Before I assemble the boxes, I've got to cut out some notches, also known as rabbits, so that I can slide in some half inch plywood, like you see the example right here, for the bottom of the drawer. So I made a line a quarter inch from the bottom where I want my notch to start. Then I lined it up on my table saw so that the blade would be right on that line to start with. Now the piece is going to be face down, but I'm holding it sideways so that I can see the line. The fence is a quarter inch away from the first cut and then the depth of the blade is very important as well. I only want it to cut in a quarter of an inch. Then I just run the board over it like I would a normal cut except the blade only goes to a certain height which means it's only cutting into a certain depth on the workpiece. I'm using a micro jig gripper to push the piece across so that my hand does not have to be on top of the board where that blade would be. And yeah, you probably guessed it already, but every single board needs to have this groove or rabbit cut out of it. So I settled in to knock it out. Okay, I've got the first line done and it looks great. Now I need to grab a half inch piece of plywood as a block to show me exactly the width that I need in order to be able to slide that plywood into the groove. So now it's just a matter of resetting the table saw and making the cuts until it is wide enough to fit it. Now I just need to do it like a hundred more times. Then after all the boards were cut, I grabbed the chisel and got to work cleaning out all of the rabbits. So the bottom of the drawers dimensions is just a little tricky since it has that rabbit indent in the sides. So I dry fitted the sides together and then I did an exact measurement on what the board's length needed to be. Then I ripped down some half inch plywood and then took it to the miter saw to cut it to length. I did a little sanding just because I wanted the bottom to be nice and smooth and then I was able to do a little dry fit. And yes, look at that. Pretty sweet. After I felt good about all my dimensions, I went ahead and did all the pocket holes on all of my boards. Again, I'm not doing dovetails, nothing fancy here, just good old fashioned pocket holes with pocket hole screws to hold these together. I knocked out the whole batch and finally was able to do some assembly. So you're probably thinking, whoa, bro, chill, you didn't put the bottoms in. Well, I was so paranoid that I didn't have my dimensions correct. I went ahead and assembled all of the drawer boxes together on this next round without the drawer bottoms, just so I could make sure that they were the right dimensions. I wanted to make sure before I did a final glue up. I finally got done and I was pumped. Yeah. So then I brought them all over and just put them inside the base cabinets because I wanted to test and just make absolutely sure I had the dimensions correct. I grabbed my drawer slides and slid them into the side, both of them together, and I made sure I had enough room. The key is making sure they're not too skinny but not too long. It's got to be the right fit. Sweet, we're good to go. So I grabbed my first drawer bottom and used it as a template and then cut the rest out of the half inch plywood. 
I had already made a cut down the middle and then I just had to clean it up with my jigsaw. I'm not really sure why I wasn't cutting on top of my workbench. I guess I was too lazy to get the risers, but you can see what happens and drop. Okay, time for the glue up. As you might expect, I had to disassemble all the drawers and then I just reassembled them, but this time with glue on every joint. I also glued around the drawer bottom so that it was really secure. When I slid in the bottom, it was nice knowing that I had already tested out the dimensions, I had nothing to worry about, and now I can make these secure. For the final step of the drawer assembly, I wanted to tack in the sides with my nail gun just to hold those sides against the drawer bottom while that glue dried. So I drew a line from each end, marking where to have that nail go straight in and pop the nails in. Now it's time for some drawer installation. So this can be pretty intimidating, but it's really not too bad. So I'm excited to walk you through it. So I start by putting a half inch spacer at the bottom. I've already decided how many drawers I want in here and how they should be spaced out. And so I want a half inch in between all of them. So I do the half inch, I screw it in, and then I go to the other side and I do the exact same thing. I want my drawer to match that same height, so I throw some half inch plywood spacers to put the drawer on and then put the drawer on top of it. Now it's flush with those rails. So then I pull it out just a little bit so I can reach one of the holes of the drawer slider that I can then screw that into the drawer itself. Boom, perfect. After I do the other side, I come back to the same side and I pull it out just a little bit further, making sure that drawer stays level and I'm able to then drive the screw into the next hole. Again, as long as the drawer stays level, this works great. Then I take the drawer off so that I can add the screws on the last part of the drawer slide there. There's a couple holes to choose from, so you pick the one you want. Once I did both sides, I screwed them in and then I was able to put the drawer back into place. I pull the bottom spacers out and now the drawer can slide freely. Look at that, perfect. Since I chose not to do face frames or spacers in my base cabinets, I'm able to just repeat the process for the spacing on the second drawer. So I add the spacer, I put the drawer slides in, and then once they're attached to each side, I'm able to then put the spacer on top of the drawer now, and then put my drawer on top of that to be able to get the right height. It works perfect. So then, yeah, you just repeat the exact same process. I pull it out just a little bit, I tap in those screws, I pull it out just a little more with the bottom drawer with it, and as long as this stays level, you are good to go. Then I pull the drawer off, and I can attach that last part. Sweet! Two down, one more to go. And again, I measured beforehand so I knew exactly how vertical my height was for all my drawers and how much space I wanted between them. So as long as you use the right height spacers for each drawer, you're good to go. This is a really good way to add the drawers, but if you're doing spacers or face frames, it would be a little bit different process to install them. For me, I thought this was a great approach for my garage workshop miter station. The last one goes in and yes, and you can see I've already done some other drawers and this process has been awesome. So I just have three more to do and then my drawers are finished. Now for the drawer fronts. So I wanted my drawer fronts to look continuous with one piece of plywood. So I laid it against the cabinets and now I'm marking to make sure they stay in the right place by marking the columns A, B, C, and D. So then I went over and cut them into their columns with my rip cut. Once they were all cut, I laid them all in front just so I wouldn't forget where I wanted them to be. Then I took each column to my table saw to rip them down to the right width for each drawer. I accounted for about a quarter inch between each drawer front just so I could make it appear like they were almost touching. I also labeled each one just so I wouldn't forget. Lastly, I cut the two large drawer fronts and now I'm good to go. 
Since I'm currently obsessed with chamfers, I wanted to give my drawer fronts a cool edge. And yeah, I went ahead and chamfered all of the edges. And by the way, I now have a router table because I found one on sale during this project. So of course, I wish I would have had it during the other part where I had to cut the rabbits out of the drawers. But hey, now it's really helping me out. So I went ahead and cut all of the chamfers on all of the drawer faces. After I had sanded them all smooth, it was time to go ahead and mount them to the cabinet drawers. I'm doing a little unconventional method, but I think it works really well. So after I found the middle, I put some painter's tape in front of all of them, which I'll explain why here in a little bit. So I've already done the top first one there, and I'm lining up the second one where I want it to go. So I'm using my quarter inch spacers, and I'm making sure it's all square. Once I got it exactly where I wanted it to be, I pop in two nails with my nail gun right on that tape. Then I just worked my way down using the spacers and tapping them in with the nail gun. Something to note is on the left there, I've got a little quarter inch piece of plywood tacked onto the side. That's because I'm going to go ahead at the end and put a full piece there to hide those lines that you see there. And I wanted my drawer faces to hang over it and be flush with it. So I have that there as a marker. So after the first column was done, I just moved along to finish all the rest. and done boom now i needed to secure the drawer fronts to the drawers themselves with screws and get this permanent as you can see sometimes the nails didn't quite hold the drawer fronts there that great but as long as they kept them there long enough for me to screw in the screws i was great i used two screws per drawer front and then on the big ones i used four Okay, to answer the question of the painter's tape. So I wanted to fill in those nail holes because I didn't know if my drawer handles were going to cover them or not. And so this makes it very easy. You just cover the hole with the putty, the wood filler, and then you go to pull the painter's tape off and it makes it real clean. You almost can't even see it. Awesome. I remembered I needed to add the front of the kick plate, so I measured the height, and then after I cut a piece down on the miter station, I took it to the table saw right there and ripped it down to the exact size. Then I just moved it underneath. Now this was a little tricky because that concrete is raised up a little bit in the middle, but with a little help of a sledgehammer and a piece of wood to protect it, I was good to go. Finally, now we can build the handles and get these drawers complete. So I loved my idea from earlier of the handles that I made myself. So I went ahead and cut down some more half inch plywood to use for all the handles. After I cut down the handle, I needed to cut the spacer. So I grabbed one of my already made handles to show me the measurement and I just copied that on my table saw. Then I ripped those down. Then I took them to the miter station to cut them down to their size. Let's assemble some drawer handles. So pretty simple here, just like you saw me do earlier, glue and screw and we are good to go. Done, awesome. I thought it would be cool to match the chamfer look of the drawer face fronts and so I chamfered all the edges of the drawer pulls. After that, I branded them all, of course. Then it was the joy of sanding. Oh, this was fun for about five seconds. And then I just had to settle in and knock them all out. Time for installation. As you can see, I've already moved into my drawers with a lot of my tools. I just couldn't wait to start using them. For the top drawers, it was easy to install the drawer pulls because I already had holes in the drawers from when I had them already attached. So I just drilled through those holes through the front plate and that way I knew exactly where they'd be. So then I piloted some screws through those holes and then I matched up the drawer pull to it and was able to lock it in place. Looking good, man. So then I just continued on down the row. The 
The other drawer pulls were a little trickier to mount just because I wanted them to match up with the ones on the top. So I grabbed my four foot level and I drew an outside line and then I drew another line on the other outside. That way I knew exactly where they would fit in the center. And then for the vertical plane, I wanted it to be dead in the center as well. So I made a mark in the middle of each drawer for my starting reference point. Then once I knew where I wanted the handle to go, I was able to draw a little line on the top of the handle and then underneath the handle so that I could then put two dots exactly where I wanted those drawer pulls to be attached from the inside. Then I grabbed my drill to drill holes through to the other side. Now I've got a hole inside the drawer where I can screw the screws back through it against the handle. So then I screwed both screws through just so I could barely see them. Sorry about the camera angle, by the way. Then I was able to place the drawer pull right on those screws where I wanted them to be. Holding them in place, I then screwed the screws in as far as they could go. Once I got one in, I made sure it was level and then popped the other one in. Awesome, works like a charm. So then I just repeated the process on every other drawer until it was all finished. Yes, we made it. All the drawer pulls are in and the drawers on the Dream Miter Station are now finished. Well, we did it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful. Don't forget to check out the other parts of the series in case you missed them. And also make sure you subscribe to stay connected on all my future videos. Thanks.